if you will turn with me to Mark 1. Do you want me to continue or do you want to speak? I want you to keep preaching. All right. Mark 1, uh, verse 14 and 15. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent you and believe the gospel. This is Jesus' first message. Repent you and believe the gospel. We've been talking about this for several weeks. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4. Doyle spoke this at the beginning. I'm going to speak it again. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you that gospel, the one that Jesus preached, the one that Paul preached, the one that Peter preached. It says, Which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain, what saves you? The gospel saves you. And it says, for I have delivered unto you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. We've been talking about this is what we preach. This is what we believe. This is what we set our faith on. And I get the wonderful, wonderful privilege of preaching this gospel. And I'm going to start from verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How? That Christ died. Stop. Christ died. That's the first part of the gospel. You need all three parts for it to be the gospel. Jesus died, he was buried, and he had to raise again. It is not the gospel if Jesus has not raised again. But we're going to stop at Jesus died. Have you ever considered Jesus dying? Have you ever considered Jesus died? He died. He had to die. He had to die. Turn with me to John 1. We're going to look at Jesus dying. You know what? In the beginning, in the very beginning, John 1, 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was with God. Folks, don't get so spiritual. Read it like a fifth grader. The Word was with God. That means there's two. That means there's two. The cat was with the dog. That doesn't mean that the dog is the cat. All right? There's two. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God. He was a God. There were two gods. There were two gods. Why is this so wonderful? Because a God can't die. You can't kill a God. A God cannot die. He's immortal. But we got Jesus dying. It says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, by Jesus. And without him was not anything made that was made. But he had to die. Go with me to verse 14. And the Word, the Word, the Word that was with God, it says, was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. That Word that was, God, was a God and was with God became flesh, became flesh. Go with me to Philippians 2. Yes, this, if you will believe, if you will believe the words in this Bible, if you will look at them, if you will consider them, if you will get them in your heart, you will see that all through the New Testament and the Old Testament, it talks about the God Jesus becoming a man. It says now, Philippians 2, beginning in verse 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, being a God, Jesus at one time was a God. It says in uh, uh, Proverbs 8 that he was daily God's delight. It says, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Why? Because he was a God too. There were two. Amen. It says, being in the, uh, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But then look. Look at the next verse. But, but made himself no reputation. It took upon him the form of a servant. And became, uh, when was made in the likeness of men. If you look at the NIV, it says he made himself nothing. He made himself nothing. That God that was with the Father became a man like you and I. And he gave up all his godly ability. He gave up the power to live forever. He gave up the power to be everywhere at once. He gave up the power to know everything at once. He gave up that power that he could create anything. He gave it all up, and he became a man, 
a man just like us. Amen. All right. It says, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He became a man. And being found in fashion as a man, being found as a man, a man, it says he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, unto death, even the death of the cross. Amen. Why did he become a man? So he could die. So Jesus could die. He couldn't die as a God, so he had to become a man. Turn with me. Did he, uh, turn with me to 1 Corinthians 15 again. And I'm going to begin in verse 21. It says, For since by man came death, since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For in Adam all die. In Adam, your great-grandfather Adam is the reason we all die. The reason we all die is because of your great-grandfather Adam. Yes, we all had the same great-grandfather, and his name was Adam. And it says, for in Adam all die, and even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But if you go back up to verse 21, it says, but since by man came death, the next verse, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Why? Because somebody had to die. Somebody had to die to get resurrected, and that somebody had to be a man. A God cannot die. A God cannot die. And Jesus humbled himself Amen. and became a man so he could die. Turn with me to Hebrews 10. Jesus became a man. No, not half man, not half man, half God. He became all man. He gave up all his ability. Do you hear that? It says he emptied himself of all his godly ability, all of it. He had to become a total man. The only thing that was left was his spirit. The spirit of Jesus. But that spirit of Jesus had no power. It had no godly powers whatsoever. It had to die. It had to be able to die. All right. Now, Hebrews 10, verse 5. Wherefore, when Jesus cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice an offering that wouldest not, but a body has not prepared me. He's talking to the Father. And what did the Father do for Jesus? He prepared him a body. He gave Jesus a body, a body just like yours and mine, a body that gets hungry, a body that gets tired, a body that has to go to the bathroom, a body that, that is weary, a body that has to think, a body that has to be tempted. That's the body that Jesus the Father gave to Jesus. Why? Amen. So he could walk for us, so he could walk just like us, so he could be tempted just like us, so he could walk just like a man did, and then Amen. one day he was going to die. Thank God. He was your sacrifice. It says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice an offering that would not, but a body has not prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins that they did under the old covenant, thou hast had no pleasure. He said, Then said I, this is what Jesus said. He said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me Amen. to do thy will, O God. Jesus gave up being a God and became a man to do the will of God. And we will find that the will of God was to die. The will of God was to die. He had to die so that we could be forgiven, so that we could be justified, so that we could have all our sins taken away, so that we could be delivered from the power of darkness, so we could be right back where Adam was before Adam fell. Amen. Now, turn with me to Hebrews 2. All through this word, you will see Jesus became a man. All through it, God opened their eyes. Let them see that Jesus loved us enough that he gave up being a God and he became a man to walk for us, to Amen. die for us, to be buried for us, and to be raised again for us. Hebrews 2, verse 9. I will finish here. But we see Jesus, who was made. Jesus, who was made. God provided him a body, and Jesus had to be born. He said he was made a little lower than the angels. Why? For the suffering of death. Look here. Jesus didn't become an angel. He became a man. He said, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Jesus knows what death feels like. Amen. He said, for it became him from whom are all things. 
and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons, that's us, into glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect, perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified of all of one, are all of one for, which cause, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. That's what Jesus did. He became a man. Why? You will see he became a man so he could die in your place. He became a man so he could be buried in, for you. And he became a man so he could raise you from the dead.